Thanks for joining me with Pool Elementary today and today we'll be going over the basic change out of your sand filter pressure gauge. Um, sometimes you'll come in and pool will be running, pressure will be at zero, or sometimes when you turn your pump off it'll be stuck at like 20. Um, it's time for a new pressure gauge. These are fairly easy to change. So these pool pressure gauges for the tops of these sand filters um, basically come in a couple different styles. As you can see, the one we have in here is basically a back mount, meaning the threads come out the back and then it fits into this T-assembly with the uh, air bleed valve on it. Um, other types of uh, the top mount filters and stuff, we'll go over those in a minute. But, so when these pressure gauges are shot and they're reading zero, even when the pool's on or they're stuck at 20 when the pool's off, we're gonna wanna change them out. In order to do that, we're going to turn our heater off on our pool, let that cool, then turn off our pump. As soon as our pump's off, we're going to release our air bleed valve and just take any back pressure off of this. And then we'll turn this counterclockwise and unthread it like so. So basically these pressure gauges come with a back mount, which they'll go right in so you can see the pressure Right. are a Pentair product and their part number is 190059 so if you want to order one of these you can or you can just go down to your hardware store um, or water or plumbing store and basically you want to get um, a regular pressure gauge for water um, anywhere from 0 to 50 to 0 and 60 pounds per pressure and basically it's going to have quarter inch threads on it so even if it's not a back mount, even a side mount will work. It's just you're going to be reading your pressure sideways. Um, and that's kind of it. If they don't have this little guide on here to tell you when to clean your filter, um, I always backwash these before I start with a new filter. And basically when we start the pump back up and get the system running, our starting pressure is gonna come up probably somewhere between 10 and 15 pounds of pressure. And I usually just take a Sharpie marker and mark my beginning pressure after the filter is backwashed. And then I'll just go 10 pounds above that, make another mark with my marker or, or Sharpie to let me know that that's when I need to clean my filter. So with your new pressure gauge, um, like I said, you can uh, screw these in tight. Um, a lot of the times they're going to leak. So instead of screwing them in tight, I like to put uh, two wraps of Teflon tape around these. So with the threads facing you, you always wanna run your Teflon tape clockwise. So that way when you go to thread it in, the end of the tape that's overlapping basically drags instead of bunches up when you screw it in. So we'll take it, threads facing us, and make sure you don't cover up the end of your pressure gauge because that's where it's going to be reading the water pressure. And we'll just give that two wraps. And it's definitely important not to put too much of this on there. So in order to get a good seat inside of our T assembly or in the side of our multi-port where our pressure gauge goes, um, we want to get at least three to five threads in there. So basically, we'll just give her a nice three to five turns. So you, as you feel it getting snug, you really don't want to go much tighter than that. So as long as you've gotten three threads in there, you, you should be good. Um, these things tend to, they're just plastic. Uh, they're about $20 to replace these T-assemblies on these Pentair Triton filters. Um, and that's kind of it. Once, if you got three threads in there and you've got some Teflon on there, you should be always good. So basically, so on these Pentair TR filters basically with the side mount multi-port valve um, these T air bleed T assemblies on the top uh, where the pressure gauge screws in sometimes these will snap right here and you'll get a leak or if you're tightening this pressure gauge into this uh, and you go too tight basically they'll snap right here they're real cheap and uh, they snap really easily that's that's the reason being I only go about three threads into them um, if you do snap one of those, um, the part number for these is Pentair154689. 
and you can get those at any of your local pool shops or you should be able to even google them online and pick one up for under 20 bucks um, once that's in we can close our bleeder valve turn our system back on let it get all primed up and then basically bleed our air off out of our sand filter and pressure gauge should work fine so if you have like a pentair tagless filter which is a top mount or meaning your multi-port valve is on the top of the filter, chances are your pressure gauge is going to thread right into the side of it. Um, same difference, uh, a back mount pressure gauge works best, but if you have a side mount, because that's all you can find at one of your local hardware stores, they'll work also. So with these, same difference, we're gonna take out our old one, like so. And basically with these, same situation, um, if you over tighten these or if you put too much Teflon on them and over and tighten them in, basically they'll snap this housing. If you snap this housing on this multi-port valve, you're probably looking at anywhere from $150 to $225 for a new one. So definitely important to clean this up. And then basically, like I said, we're only gonna do two wraps of Teflon around this. So we're going to wrap our uh, Teflon tape, two wraps, clockwise around this. Any Teflon tape will work. I prefer to use the Monster, it's a good brand. So with our threads facing us, we'll wrap it around clockwise. Two wraps is all you need, like so. And we'll make sure that we have no Teflon covering our bottom hole here. And basically start our threads. And we want three to five turns on this to make sure we have enough thread catch. So there's one, two, and as we come around, there's three. Just enough right there. And that's always it. If you do turn it back on and you end up and you do have a little bit of a seep, we always have uh, enough room to probably get one more turn out of it. So screwing it in at three turns or three threads is a safe point and then basically it allows us to be able to turn it some more. Um, definitely too much Teflon over tightening these. I've broke these myself so I know that they're 150 to 225 bucks. Um, it's a really bad situation because then your pool's down or you basically are just seeping out of here. There's no fix. I mean, I've tried plumber's putty, glues, um, epoxies. They just, they always leak because as you screw the threads in, it spreads that area where it cracks. So once this is all back in, make sure your filter's on filter and go ahead and fire your system back up. If you haven't backwashed before you put your pressure gauge in, make sure you backwash um, and then you'll have a clean filter. And then once it's backwashed, you can set your starting point and then basically you'll know you'll have to backwash 10 pounds above from where that is. So there we have the two different styles of pressure gauge um, attachments. Uh, you basically got your side mount sand filter with a T assembly where it goes in, or you've got your top mount multi port valve where the pressure gauge goes in the side. Thanks for joining me with Pool Elementary, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and like, and we'll see you next time.